Hi everyone. So for today's math lesson, we are going to need a blank piece of paper that is blank on both sides of the paper. So first, before you listen to the rest of this video, please find a piece of blank paper that is blank on both sides. I asked you to get a blank piece of paper because in today's math lesson, we're going to be reviewing the things that we've learned in this unit, that's unit three, um, so that we can get ready for our test tomorrow. Now the test that you're taking will be on Seesaw, so you'll be answering the questions right in Seesaw, and I'll be able to see your answers after you turn it in. Today, though, you're going to be listening to this video and following along with the directions that I'm giving. You'll be practicing the things that we've learned here with me. And then you'll do two pages in your math journal um, that will also help you get ready for the math test tomorrow. All right, on that blank piece of paper that you grabbed, will you draw a line down the middle like this? Now, I happen to have a whiteboard here at home that's from the classroom. You probably don't have one of these at your house. That's why I asked you to get a piece of paper. But the line that you're drawing goes straight up and down, and then you'll draw another line across like this so that you have four rectangles on your piece of paper. Now, they do not have to be perfect. My rectangles are clearly not all the exact same size. That's okay. We're just going to be using these four spaces to answer questions and to practice these concepts that we've learned in this unit together. We'll also do the same thing on the back side of the paper. So if you'd like, you can draw the same lines on the back side of the paper right now. Now the first part of our math test talks about the part part total diagram that we could use to help us solve a problem. Do you remember the part part total diagram? That's when we draw a rectangle and we make a big space at the top and two smaller parts at the bottom and we can use it to help us solve a problem. Now you don't have to draw one of these right now on your paper or whiteboard or anything. I just want you to look at this one. But let's say that the problem said a ball costs five pennies and a sticker costs three pennies. How many pennies would both items cost in all? That would be an example of a part part total problem because I could say part of that number story was five. The ball costs five pennies. And the other part of that number story was three because the sticker cost three pennies. So in total, what would these two parts make? Well, five, and then we say six, seven, eight. I counted up three, right? I landed on eight. So in total, we would have three, sorry, in total, we would have eight pennies um, that would be the total cost of both items. Now your job in this first space on your board is to write a number sentence that goes with this part part total diagram. So I showed you that five and three were the two parts. The total number was eight. What would the number sentence be that goes with that part part total diagram. Go ahead and write it on your paper in that first space right now. All right, on your space, your first space here, you should have written five plus three equals eight. That's a part part total number sentence that went with our part part total number story. Now on the test tomorrow, it's going to ask you how does this match up with the number story that I told. Let's talk about that right now. The number story that I told was this. A ball costs five pennies. A sticker costs three pennies. How many pennies do both items cost in all? So if you're trying to answer with words about how this number sentence goes with that story that I just told, you might think, well, the first number that you said was five, and the second number that you said was three. I had to solve to figure out what those things were in all. Or you might say five was part of the number story, 
three was part of the number story. Eight was the total number that these two add-ins add up to. But this number sentence goes along with the number story because these numbers were in the number story, right? They were part of the number story and we were solving for this unknown one right here. So just think about how you will answer that when you, when, when, it, when the test asks you, how does your number sentence or number model match the number story, the, the problem that I talked about? Think about that. All right, let's do another one together. In your second box on your paper, you're going to write a number sentence or a number model or an equation that goes with this part part total diagram. So I've shown you part is six, part is four. You have to figure out what the total would be and then put the whole number sentence right here in the second box on your paper. So the parts are six and four, what would the total be? And then write a number sentence to go with it. In your third box on your paper, will you please write eight plus one equals, and then tell what it equals, and then one plus eight equals, and tell what it equals. And then underneath that, if you have some more space down here, can you write what rule we used when we saw that the answers matched, and we saw that these add-ins matched, but they were just flipped around. What's the name of that rule that we use when we see problems like this? Now, in the fourth box on your paper, you're going to write a number sentence that goes with this number story. So listen closely. Pierre, the bird, had nine treats in his cage. He ate four of them. How many treats were left? So here it is again. Pierre the bird, it had nine treats in his cage. He ate four of them. How many treats were left? So hopefully you started writing a number sentence that is subtraction and then you're going to fill in the answer. All right, now on the back of your paper, you're going to draw two lines so that it looks like this. So you have four more boxes so we can do a little bit more practice. We're going to answer these questions next. So on this first box, you don't need to draw this like I did. You are actually going to be writing the rule that goes with this frames and arrows routine. So if you saw seven, then the next number was five, and the next number was three, what would the rule be that these numbers are following? First of all, you need to tell, are they going up or down? Are you counting up or back? Are you counting um, backwards or forwards? Are they getting bigger or smaller? Think about these numbers, they're getting smaller, right? So we might say, subtract something or take away something. We have to figure out how many we're subtracting by now. If I started at seven and I'm counting backwards and stopping at five, how many hops would that be? Well, I don't have a number line right in front of me, but I can use my fingers. So if I said seven, six, five, oh look, I only put up two fingers when I hopped from seven to five. That must mean we counted back two. Let's try it on this next one. If we start at five and count back until we get to three, we'll test it out. Start at five, four, three. Oh look, that was also counting back two here. So go ahead and write the rule for this frames and arrows routine. Again, you don't have to write these numbers. Please write the rule that these numbers are following on your paper. For the next one, you're going to tell what would come next in this sequence. Five, ten, what would come next? I'll give you a hint, we're counting by fives. So write what number comes next on your paper. On this one, we're also telling what comes next. We've got 40, 50, oh, if you need to use a number grid to help you with this one, you can. We're counting by tens to answer this. 40, 50, what would come next? 
on this last one, we're saying, seeing that the rule here is plus one. And then we're seeing the numbers 11, 12. What would come next on this sequence? If the rule is plus one and we see the numbers 11, 12, what? Write that down on your paper. All right, so now you have an idea of some of the things on the test tomorrow. There's some frames and arrows routines. There's some part, part, total, number stories and diagrams. Then another thing you're going to do to help you get ready for the test is two pages in your math journal. So in your math journal, you're going to find page 33, which looks like this. It has four math boxes on it. And you're going to find page 35, which looks like this with a ton of number lines on it. So you're going to use the number lines to show hops to answer these questions. And you're going to post that paper that you did the review on with me and these two pages from your math journal in Seesaw so I can see pictures of all of them. Now, I will not be making a math video for tomorrow. Your job will just be to complete the test on Seesaw. So um, you won't see me for math tomorrow, but you will see me on Friday for a brand new unit and a brand new lesson. All right, bye.